Hello and welcome to this test video. This is the first recording from a camera I just got. I wanted to try it out and see how it looked. The recording is a part of my morning commute and it was shot earlier this week. In this video, I'll make some remarks on the existing cycling infrastructure and what you can find if you want to cycle in the area and maybe some advice if you plan to ride a bike in Paris someday. This cycle path basically follows line one of the Paris Metro going through the city from east to west and to some extent parts of line A of the RER network. And today we're going to go from Porte de Vincennes in the east to Place de la Concorde in the center. We start right over the Paris Ring Road, Le Périphérique. We're on the pavement separated from the traffic and the pedestrians uh, who can still cross here and there, so be careful. Also the hedge is super tall for no reason and it can sometimes be hard to see. This is Porte de Vincennes, a large transport hub with two tram lines and one metro station. Bikes can ride around this area by using dedicated lanes at each intersection. We cross the boulevard and follow the yellow markings on the ground and we make our way into the smaller street that runs alongside the main avenue. We ride next to the tram station and go back on the pavement. Uh, this is not a shared space with pedestrians, but there are two schools and it can become a little crowded, so watch your speed uh, in this part of the path. This is essentially one straight line to Place de la Nation. We go across La Rue des Pyrénées and engage in the same side street as earlier. I think it qualifies as a quiet street, maybe. Uh, it's mainly used by residents and speed limit is... 30 km per hour with uh, a lot of speed bumps. The paint is almost gone now, but you can see that bikes are allowed in the opposite direction. This area is nice because even if you're with cars, they really don't have any reason to try and pass you. So you can go at your own pace and stay safe. And that car didn't want me to get to the advanced waiting area. We make our way to Nation by using this painted lane on the pavement. You can still see traffic on the main avenue. And we've reached the place. Turn right. The blue wavy shapey pattern uh, on the ground indicates that this is a shared space uh, for everyone. So cars cannot go over 20 uh, kilometers per hour and people can walk freely. We carry on around the place to go across two more avenues. When there's no traffic lights, we're supposed to refer to the pedestrian signal. Aim to your right to enter La Rue du Faubourg Saint-Antoine. Watch out for cars coming from the left. This is where the segregated path begins. We are deviating a little bit from the path of the metro uh, because we're going straight to Bastille. That's a questionable spot for an ad. Uh, this street we're on marks the limit between the 11th and the 12th arrondissement from here uh, up until Bastille. We go down this former car lane, uh, which is now for bikes. Uh, it's, it's comfortable, even if the ground has many irregularities. Now we're going to reach a bus stop that could be remade a little, I think. Um, the platform is already there. That would remove the need of having to turn twice with traffic nights next to you a little less dangerous I think but the the lane is very wide so you can pass someone or be passed easily starting from this part uh, regular cars are not allowed but only on uh, this side in this direction it's buses taxis local residents 
um, delivery vans, emergency services, uh, and bikes, uh, of course, only. It can be crowded some mornings, as you can see, but it's generally okay. Even more bike users and scooters joining. It's nice to see more people cycling to work. I pass the red light here because of that sign. It means that you're allowed to go after you've yielded to any car or pedestrian. There's plenty in Paris, essentially in smaller streets. And the same sign exists for when you want to turn uh, right at a red light. Getting closer to Bastille, you should see uh, the green column up ahead. Appreciating the absence of cars, because normally it's super busy. Lots of bars, a lot of popular shops uh, in this area in general. You see the line of cyclists is getting longer the closer we get to the place. People generally just go up the line in order to get to the next bit, but for this video, I chose to show the legal recommended path. So take this path and turn left if the pedestrian signal is green, which you can't see because of this lorry, then go across and join this island. Like you saw earlier, people prefer to cut directly on the left to reach this point. And we're on the place proper. They remade it a couple of years ago, and it's become a huge choking point for all kinds of traffic, bikes and cars and buses alike. I like to call it the dark source of bike lanes. But honestly, no one expected that bike usage would suddenly skyrocket. And uh, yeah, this design, unfortunately, it makes it a little harder to get across. And now we're entering a 100% protected cycle path that will get us to our destination. The street is closed to cars and mopeds, even though there's always plenty of cars and mopeds. Only buses, taxis, etc. can use this street normally. We're on a bi-directional lane. It's, it's very wide and the floor still feels fresh and new. It's very, very enjoyable throughout. The area is very busy at night and on the weekends and because the pavement is not large enough, some people sometimes wander on the lane, so watch out. This is simple. There's two kiosks on the left that can hide pedestrians. I don't know why I keep trying to pass that lady. In this section, the, the city of Paris has closed an extra car lane to absorb the number of potential new cyclists last year. Uh, it was just after the first lockdown period, and it's uh, remained ever since. They're supposed to become permanent, but no one knows when it's been promised. You can still see the original path on the left. Everybody uses it in both directions but I've never seen any major incidents, so I guess it's not a problem. Ironically, we're supposed to go back on the original lane anyway for two reasons. Uh, one, it's no longer protected on the right, uh, cars will come, and two, uh, is a counter, that's a green counter totem uh, that obviously counts the number of cyclists that use this path. And this one has a Twitter account, I've posted the link below. This is Hôtel de Ville. The building is now behind us. And from now on, there won't be any need for directions because it's straight ahead forever. And it's likely that we won't even have to stop. Next, we will cross the other major cycle path in Paris, 
this time going north to south, which, according to another totem, is the busiest of Paris. This is the more commercial part of the streets, very busy in the weekends. Uh, this area is known as Châtelet, more or less the center of Paris, according to Parisians. We're getting closer to the Louvre, still separated from the cars by these yellow things, but still safe. Beware of wandering SUVs. Entering a more quiet part of the street where arcades begin. If anyone knows the French show uh, Call My Agent, this is the area where it's shot. We're getting closer to Palais Royal metro station and its large pedestrian crossing. If you turn left, you will see the Louvre pyramid and the entrance of the museum. And we are already reaching the end of the journey. So it's time to thank you for watching. I just wanted to say that this video was inspired by the people I watch and enjoy on YouTube. Uh, Altis, Biclou, Cycling Dutch, Not Just Bikes, London's, London Cycle Routes, and so many more. And I'd like to thank them for their content. Feel free to leave a comment if you have any advice or suggestion. And see you in the next one.